welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I'm Selena and in today's video we'll be going over our grades and the major and minor extracurricular activities that we included on a university application. We applied to business programs and we've gotten into programs such as Rotman, Schulich, DeGroote, Ivy, Queens Commerce, and BBA with co-op at UFT. We will also be sharing advice because the dates and the scholarships that we received were different. It feels like we're exposing ourselves, but we want it to be as transparent as possible so you guys know exactly what we did to get into these universities. When we started the university application process, we were also very curious as to know what people's mugs and activities were, so this one's for you. So we only applied to five schools within Ontario, but we applied to six programs because we did two of them at UFT but on different campuses. So subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more videos on specifically the ECs that we did to get into the specific programs such as Western Foot Ivy and Queen's Commerce, and we will be updating a video with the essays that we wrote to get into these programs, so stay tuned! So because we applied to schools in Ontario, we used OUAC, which is the Ontario Universities Application Center, which is probably the one that most of you will be using if you are from Ontario. And we applied with both our IB grades, but also a regular like high school percentages. But that also explains why in this video, we will not be going over IB mugs because I'm pretty sure like none of the schools really looked at it except for Queens, which is the only one that really cares about it. And the video would be really long. So this video will just be about a regular Ontario high school mugs. So we'll both be going over a grade 11 mugs and a grade 12 mugs and grade 11 just because some of the earlier acceptances that we got to these universities we were actually based off of grade 11 marks because we hadn't done uh, like you know the required courses in grade 12 yet because of the whole quadmester thing that was going on with the pandemic. So in grade 11 my final mark for film was a 93, for English it was a 95, French was a 91, Introduction to Anthropology, Psychology, and Sociology was a 93, Functions uh, was a 91, Biology was a 91, Physics was an 88, which I actually did in grade 10, but I didn't really want to. I didn't really like it, and I never continued grade 12 physics. And my overall grade 11 average was a 92. But really, the only grade 12, grade 11 courses that we'll probably use to, you know, get offers this year is probably English and um, functions. So with my grade 11 marks, Again, even though they weren't bad, it was just a really stressful year for me because of IB. We had several grade 12 courses, so there was, we didn't necessarily, like, we didn't have the opportunity to kind of, like, relax in grade 11 that much. And I was really worried about the business programs that I want to go to because I was worried about maintaining my mugs, getting higher mugs. Specifically, though, with math, um, I got a 91, and even though it's not, like, that bad, but I had to work really hard for that 91. And I was really worried because I was afraid, like, if I don't get that mug in grade 12 math, um, like, what if I don't get into my university choice? So grade 11 was just very paranoid. Um, those math tests, like, really hurt me. <laughs> um, I'd spend nights thinking about that. And I'm not kidding you when I say that I had nightmares about math and getting my tests back. Okay, so for my grade 11 year, uh, for film, it was a 93. For visual art, I got a 95, which uh, for IB, because in 9 and 10, we had the option of a certain amount of courses that we could choose. So I took visual art, I took a grade 11 visual art in grade 10, and then Selena took introduction to business. Originally, we both wanted to do the introduction to business course, but the, uh, it just like didn't work with the correct uh, the course or whatever. So she took the introduction to business t in grade 10, and then I took a grade 11 visual art course, which I got a 95 in. Um, and then English, I got a 95. For French, I got a 90, which compared to some of my classmates could have been higher, but I cannot, like for my life, do the listening test. So whenever we do like a listening test, I don't understand what they're saying. But anyway, so I got a 90 in that. And then for introduction to anthropology, psychology, and sociology, also known as TOK, I got a 93. And then functions, I got an 88, which could have been better. And then biology, I got an 88. And physics, I got an 82, which was not a fun time, um, which is why I also didn't take grade 12 physics, but yeah, those are my grade 11 courses, and then added together, my average was a 91. So for grade 12, we'll be going over the top six mugs, so for those of you who don't, who don't know, top six usually refers to the six mugs that your universities will look at to base the offers on, and also the scholarships on, and these are your six highest mugs, but they will have to include whatever courses that university requires. So a lot of them want grade 12 
um, grade 12 English, grade 12 calculus, grade 12 functions maybe. So those would definitely be in your top six and the rest of them are just your next highest mugs. With obviously there's uh, some differences between the universities. Um, yeah, so my final film mug was a 94, English was a 95, psychology was a 96, data management, which I did over the summer, was a 96, calculus was a 93, and families in Canada was a 96. So my top six average was a 95. Um, in general, grade 12 definitely was, I think, one of my best years of high school, um, probably because we had that whole quadmaster system going on. So instead of focusing on four classes in one day, we'd only focus on two. Um, although there were, we had like some IB courses, like evening courses, psychology, um, but that wasn't too much of an issue. Uh, so overall, grade 12 was really nice. And since they... All of our courses were IB courses. Some of them occurred during the entire year. So again, the evening courses. Um, and then most of the common courses that you would need for business programs, so the ones that we applied to are, again, grade 12 English and Calc or Functions. So really make sure you aim as high as you can in those courses. Usually if you have a mid to high 80, you're in the safer end, but really try to aim above 90 for everything because 90 is, I think, a, a, the benchmark really for a lot of things. So in grade 12, these are my top six. So my for film, I got a 95. For English, I got a 94. For psychology, I got a 96. Uh, for data management, which like Selena, we took at the same time in the summer, I got a 96. For calculus, I got a 92. For families in Canada, I got a 95. I'm making my final average, oh, also not to mention, functions uh, and calculus, I got the same mug, so I both got a 92. Um, and then all together, the top six together, my final average was a 94.6. So it was practically 95 if you rounded it, but a lot of universities don't take your rounded average. So it was a 94.6. So looking back on grade 12, it actually wasn't too bad, like of a year, um, but it wasn't the best. And of course, there was a lot of good and bad with the whole quad master system. So for example, in first quad, I had film and biology, which was kind of stressful and also a lot of work because biology requires a lot of memorization for the tests and a lot of concepts. Whereas film, it always takes a long time. Like the things we do aren't super difficult, but example, if we wanted to film something in three hours, it would end up taking a day. And also editing takes a long time. So there isn't like a set time for film, like it always takes a long time. So having film and bio together was a lot of work. Um, so for me, I really, I knew I wanted to use film in my top six and I got a 95 on it. Like I knew that I would do better and it wouldn't require as much work as biology because again, I'm not a science kid. Like I hate biology and science so much. So I decided to put more work into film and therefore I, I, get, I guess it's also my fault, but I didn't spend as much time studying for biology. So it kind of suffered. Um, but luckily biology was not in my top six as I wanted. Um, and yeah, that, that was a highlight of my grade 12 year because my biology mug was not good. Um, but we don't need to talk about that. Um, but yeah, that's my grade 12 year. Definitely um, ending off grade 12 being online was not the greatest, but that is okay. But other than aiming for 90, really try to hit a 95 if you can, because I think that's the next um, benchmark and this was extremely obvious when um, like in the times that I received my offers and the amount of scholarships that I got so I in general majority of my offers came before Sarah but we did get Queens, DeGru, and Schulich on the same day but with in terms of scholarships one of the examples I can think of is Queens gave us a admission scholarship and I got one that was worth $4,000 while Sarah got one that was worth $1,500. And the only reason for that was because her, you know, final average was between a 90 to 94.9 and mine was a, above a 94.9. So again, you can see that difference of $2,500 just right there. So really try to aim for over 95. So next I'll be talking about my major extracurriculars. So these are the activities that we wrote those big essays on for Queens and for Ivy. So the first one was Just For You Tutoring, which many of you know is the nonprofit organization that I started last year and here we provide virtual one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And with this, you know, with this activity, I was the founder of it and the executive director. So I talked about my role there and how we made, you know, a lot of student matches, had a lot of tutors, and you can find more information on all of these activities that me and Sarah mentioned in the description box. My second activity was 
publishing a book and also teaching a course on it. So after I published my book, I taught a five week webinar course. So those two were put together and kind of counted as one activity. Then I talked about my role as being elected vice president of Manga Social Justice Club. So I talked about my experience and what I did in the past four years from, you know, being the social media coordinator, then elected as vice president. And here we basically do like fundraisers, school events, but this year because of COVID, we had to do a few virtual events. So those are my three major extracurriculars. And these are my major extracurriculars that I talked about. So the first one was being a book author that me and Selena both did where we self-published our books. And we actually created a video on how you can self-publish a book in one month. So it's linked in the description box, so make sure to check that out. And then my second activity was my organization, Eyes on Youth, which essentially is an international youth-led organization that aims to amplify the voices of youth through digital magazines, events, and interviews, which we actually also have a video on um, in our top five activities that will stand on university applications. So make sure to also check that out in the description. And then my third activity was being the acting co-chair of my school's library steering committee. So essentially I was the co-chair. So I, I talked about how I went from a general member and worked my way up. And of course the impact and the events that I did. Now, in terms of the minor extracurriculars, I talked about being a piano instructor and also learning piano. So I talked about uh, learning piano in four years and then how I taught with the city of Toronto. I taught with two sessions, so it was 16 kids in total, 16 kids and adults, and then how I went private after. So I started teaching some kids privately after. And then my second one was mural painting. And then my third one was being a digital marketing content creator with a local business called Vava Toronto, which again, if you want more information, we also have it um, I talk a little bit more about it in, in uh, a video called how you can successfully cold email because that's how I obtained it and essentially with being a digital marketing content creator I worked with the creative director and to initiate the first ever Instagram event uh, to boost the engagement and increase the exposure and then my last one for my extra curriculars was also a book author because that for different schools I wrote slightly different things. So a main tip is that you shouldn't be trying to do like a gajillion activities, but rather find three or four that you really care about and that can really show your development. So universities want to see, example, if maybe you're a club leader, how, how you went from a general member to a club leader. So they want to see your development, not only in growing as a person, but also in growing whatever the activity that you're doing. So try to focus again on, a spe on specific activities and doing the best that you can in those positions rather than doing the minimal effort in a bunch of different activities. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening and we hope you found this video helpful. We're here to help and we know that this entire process can be extremely stressful. For us, a university application process was relatively smooth because we had each other, but this is not the case for everyone. So we really want to help ease your stress because we know and you know too, the pressure is on in grade 12. Don't be shy, comment any questions you have in the comment section below as we're always open to more content ideas. But until next time, Quartwins out.